Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Ian Watkins, who was the lead singer of The Lost Prophets, and what has just happened to him recently. So as a lot of you will be aware, Ian Watkins has been attacked in HMP Wakefield at the weekend. He got stabbed by three of the inmates and took hostage. But just before I get into it, I want to say a massive thanks to all my subscribers for your continuing support. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please go down and double check because 70% of my viewers are still not subscribed to my channel. So if you are enjoying the content, please go down and hit that button. And also a thanks to all my Patreon members. So I've now set up a Patreon with access to my Discord which gives access to a private community where we can all discuss different topics about prison and you can interact with me personally. So my Patreons for the shout out is David Glover, James Franklin, David Earl and Ricky Della. So thank you all for joining me Patreon and welcome aboard. So Ian Watkins is in HMP Wakefield serving a 29 year sentence. And he has to serve two thirds of that sentence before he's even eligible for parole. So he's up for parole in 2031 after serving two thirds. Now the sentence that he's serving, I think he might have to serve a bit longer if he doesn't get paroled because there is different variations in sentences. On the sentence he is serving, he has to get paroled or he will serve an extra couple of years on top. Um, so he's up for parole in 2031. And as I mentioned, he's in HMP Wakefield, which is also known as Monster Mansion. And Wakefield Prison is in Yorkshire, and it houses the most sick and depraved prisoners throughout the country. So Watkins was took hostage on Sunday by three of the inmates. And in the articles that I've read in the press, the same it's to do with him playing his guitar and giving guitar lessons to the other inmates. And some of the other inmates were jealous of this, so they've attacked him. But everybody knows what he's in prison for, which I'll go into details after I've told you the story about him being took hostage. And the, the real reason will probably be because of the offence that he's in for, because he's in for child offences, and what he's actually in for all the other inmates, not so much the uh, sex offenders, but there will be other inmates that are wanting to attack him because this is what happens with high profile sex offenders. I've done videos on people previously. Um, throughout the sentence, they will get attacked at some point, and this has been Watkins' point where he has come under attack. So the three of the inmates, two of them are in for murder. So sometimes when these murderers are serving a life sentence, the, the, if they do these sort of offences, they might get an extra four or five years on top of the already affair sentence, sorry. But if they're doing a sentence of 25 years life with a recommendation of 25 years, sometimes it doesn't make no difference to them if they go and do these sort of offences whilst they're inside of prison. Because in their eyes, an extra few years is worth it for attacking somebody like this. So I don't know the details of all three of them, but two of them are in for murder. And they will get sentences added on. But they've took him hostage and he's been held hostage inside of a pad for six hours while they've all been taking turns at beating him and stabbing him. But the Mufti squad has actually come in and the Mufti squad is like screws are coming in riot gear. They come from outside prisons that are specially trained for these sort of uh, situations. So in this situation, they'll have talked the prisoners out of it and trying to get them over the pad before they've actually murdered them, because this was probably their plan. If they took them into a pad, three of them have probably plotted to kill him. But I don't know what the other inmates were in for, apart from that they were in for murder. And what normally happens is, like I've mentioned previously, these people think that they get put on protection, and that's it, they're protected from the rest of the general population. Because you've got two separate types of prisoners. You've got the general population, which is people that are in for what you would call normal offences, if you can't see a normal. And then you've got the ones that are in for sexual offences, which get put on the VP wings, which stands for Vulnerable 
prisoner. But sometimes some of the lads from up on the general population who are in for non-sexual offences either get into trouble with the other lads on the wing and they run off the wing for protection and they get put in with the paedophiles or people get into drug debts and they can't actually pay for the drug debts. And they're getting threatened, they're going to get done in or they might have been done in, they might have been slashed, stabbed, um, kicked off the wing and they're now living with the sex offenders. And these are the type of people that more often than not are the ones that attack the high profile paedophiles or rapists or sex offenders, we'll call them. And these are the ones that want to maybe try and make a name for themselves or try and get back on the general population because they'll be bragging, saying, I'm the one that done so-and-so, I'm the one that done Ian Huntley or done ben Belfield, because they've all come under attack at some point in the sentence. But um, <clears throat> again, as well, when I've covered topics on other prisoners that have actually been murdered in prison, a lot of the time, the murders that happen in the prisons are happening on the VP wings, the sex offender wings, and it's normally by another sex offender. Like the case where I covered it on here about Richard Huckle, the dep depraved sex offender who got murdered in Full Sutton, I think it was. He got murdered. Everyone was like in the comments, a lot of people were praising him, saying, oh, well done to the lad that done it. But... In fact, the lad that done it was actually a sex offender himself. But sometimes I've heard of prison officers who have actually worked with these that sex offenders, you've got two types of sex offenders as well. You've got the ones that do it to women or men, and then the ones that do it to kids. You've got the rapists, then you've got the paedophiles. And a screw told me in Franklin Prison that sometimes these rapists who have in for raping adults or raping women don't look at themselves as being as bad as these that have raped kids. So what happens is these are the ones that then go on and attack them because they think they're a bit higher up than the ones that have been in for hurting children. So these are the type of people that are actually assaulting them in prison. Sometimes, like I've mentioned, it's not the lads on general population. It's other sex offenders. And the majority of the murders that have happened in the high security prisons is sex offender on sex offender. Now, for those of you who don't know who Ian Watkins is, or you don't know who the Lost Prophets are, these were a band that obviously was formed, and Ian Watkins was the lead singer. So Watkins' full name is Ian David Corslake Watkins, and he was born on the 30th of July, 1977. He was born in Merthyr Tidville in Wales. He later moved to Pontypridd, where he attended Hawthorne High School with future Lost Prophets bandmate, Mike Lewis. He gained a first-class honours degree in graphic design from the University of Wales, Newport. But Watkins actually got a 10-month sentence added on to his sentence because he was caught with a phone in his possession. And he's actually been moved to a couple of different prisons uh, before he was in Wakefield Prison. So Lewis and Watkins' mutual enjoyment of rock and metal music strengthened their relationship leading them to form a group as teenagers in 1991 called Aftermath, a thrash metal band that played in a shed in Watkins Gardens. Aftermath never recorded any material. They introduced the future bandmate Lee Gears through a mutual friend, having abandoned Aftermath, which made two live appearances in its lifespan of two years. Watkins and Gears decided to form a new band called Flesh Bind, based on their American hardcore punk influences. The band played several shows, including one support and feeder in London, but the group was short-lived. Watkins reunited with Mike Lewis as a drummer in a hardcore band called Public Disturbance, formed in 1995. Watkins and Gears had left Fleshbind to create their own band, Lost Prophets, who made their live debut in May 1997, alongside Public Disturbance, with Watkins as a lead vocalist. In 1998, Watkins left Public Disturbance to concentrate on the newly named Lost Prophets. In 2003, Watkins was featured on the Huberstang song, Out of Control, along with Jamie Oliver, who was by then a member of Lost Prophets. And when I say Jamie Oliver, I'm not on about the chef here, by the way, people. <laughs> 
On New Year's Eve 2008, Watkins took part in a concert for Kidney Wales Foundation and stated that his reasons for being involved were as a result of his mother needing a kidney transplant. Watkins was also featured on the Blackout song It's High Tide Baby from their debut studio album We Are The Dynamite. In 2009, Watkins started a remix and side project called La Morgue La Morgue. He released 17 remixes by artists such as The Killers, Beyoncé, Young Guns, and a few others, just to name. He also released a free mixtape, which was available online, along with a free download of a song that was premiered at a fashion show in 2008. Lost Profits released five studio albums. The Fake Sound of Progress, Start Something, Liberation Transmission, The Betrayed, and weapons. Watson's abuse and misconduct with children started or came to light in around about 2008 and these bandmates were starting to notice things going on that weren't right which shouldn't have been happening because when he was touring he was getting the young audience members to come back to his room and he requested a private dressing room away from his bandmates and his bandmates were taking notice of what was actually going on. But around this time, he was into heavy drug use as well. And his behavior was getting erratic and out of control. And his other band members started drifting away from him because they didn't want to have nothing to do with him when they were seeing this sort of thing going on. He was taking young girls back to his dressing room out of view of the other people. And it came to light and it was actually reported, but the police didn't act upon it. Watkins' bandmates were actually spending a lot of time in Los Angeles where he should have been with all of them when they're performing or doing tours. But he decided to stay back in Wales whilst his bandmates were in Los Angeles so he could get up to these activities away from the bandmates. So one of his bandmates, who was the bassist, Stuart Richardson, didn't like his behaviour and he seen what was going on and Watkins had actually missed a live performance. So when Stuart Richardson actually come back onto the bus and he come face to face with Watkins, he actually goes on to say he lost control and he started beating Watkins up, punching the living daylights out of him. And Stuart Richardson had a can of monster energy in his hand whilst he was doing this and he was smashing his head in with the can. Multiple women had come forward and actually reported Watkins and one of them was his ex-girlfriend, Joanne, who said she had seen explicit images of children, which she reported to the police. Joanne Jadzelix, his ex-partner, actually contacted the child's parents, who had also contacted the police. And when they went to the police, there was no further action taken. So this was again how Watkins was going unnoticed, and probably with his being famous or in the band, which was famous, he was going unnoticed or they, they couldn't do anything about him. So Watkins was first apprehended in June 2012 in connection to various drug charges and he was granted bail shortly afterwards. Watkins had already attracted attention from Welsh law enforcement after several friends reported that he was regularly smuggling cocaine or methamphetamines from Los Angeles. He was arrested again on the 4th of November for drug possession on a separate allegation that he possessed an obscene image of a child. He pleaded not guilty of the charges of possessing explicit material shortly after being granted bail yet again. Watkins performed his final show with Lost Profits on the 14th of November 2012 in Newport, Wales. He was arrested a third time on the 17th of December 2012 due to another drug possession charge. South Wales Police immediately conducted a search of his home and computer in connection to their prior investigation. During the search, officers discovered numerous indecent images of children stored on his computer. On the 19th of December, he was charged a court of magistrates court with a conspiracy to engage in sexual activity with a one-year-old girl on possession and distribution of decent images of children on extreme animal pornography. He was remanded in custody, as were his two feel female court accused. His barrister said Watkins would deny the accusations. On the 31st of December that year, he appeared at Court of Crown Court via video link from HMP Park in Bridgend and was remanded in custody until the 11th of March 2013. 
The case was adjourned until May, with the trial date set for the 15th of July. At a hearing on the 3rd of June 2013, he denied all charges via a video link. On the 6th of June 2013, it was announced that the trial would start on the 25th of November and was expected to last a month. A previous application for the court venue to be moved outside Wales was denied. And on the 26th of November, Watkins pleaded guilty to attempted rape and sexual assault of a child under 13, but not guilty to rape. This was accepted by the prosecution. He further pleaded guilty to three counts of sexual assault involving children, six counts of taking or making or possessing indecent images of children, and one count of possessing an extreme pornographic image involving a sex act on an animal. His victims included a baby boy, and he sent a text message to the mother of one victim and said, if you belong to me, so does your baby. South Wales Police Investigations into Watkins, codenamed Operation Globe, required the cooperation to decrypt a hidden drive on his laptop, which was found to contain video evidence of his abuses. Investigators later bypassed the encrypted password to Watkins' laptop. On the 27th of November, the day after his guilty plea had been accepted by the prosecution, Watkins were referred to his sex offences as mega lulls in a recorded phone call to a female fan from HMP Park. A sentencing hearing was held at Cardiff on the 18th of December 2013. Watkins barrister Sally O'Neill QC said that Watkins had no recollection of the case involving the attempted rape, but had belatedly realised the gravity of what happened after having developed an obsession with videoing himself. Justice John Rice sentenced Watkins to 29 years in prison with eligibility to apply for parole in 2031 after serving two-thirds of his prison term, followed by six years of supervised release. His two co-defendants, the mothers of his victims, respectively received sentences of 14 and 17 years in prison. The judge said the case plunged into new depths of depravity. A senior investigating officer on the case described Watkins as a committed, organised paedophile and potentially the most dangerous sex offender he had ever seen. Watkins was transferred from HMP Park, where he had been incarcerated while on remand, to HMP Wakefield to begin his sentence. In order to be closer to his mother after she had a kidney transplant, he was transferred to HMP Long Lawton on the 25th of January 2014. And on the 9th of November 2017, Watkins was accused of grooming a young mother from prison through a series of letters. And as of March 2018, he was back at Wakefield. So Watkins arrived back at Wakefield Monster Mansion, where he rightly deserves to be. But as I've just went over the case there, some of the things are quite sick. and Well, all of it is quite sick and it's quite explicit. But um, a couple of me viewers were asking us about doing a video on this. So I've went into depth on this video. I've told you about what happened whilst he was in Wakefield when he got attacked just at the weekend gone and all of the offences that he's in prison for now. And as I've just told you there in the video, he, he had two court defendants, two mothers of the children that he was interfering with. who got 14 years and 17 years. What kind of women are these to be letting a monster like this anywhere near his children that don't deserve to have contact with their kids ever again? But like I've mentioned, the two people that have attacked Watkins, two of them are in for murder, and I'm not sure on the other one. But a lot of people will say he got what he rightly deserved, but we don't know what the defendants or the attackers are in for themselves. Because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, more times than not, these are actually sex offenders themselves. But beast versus beast, and this is what goes on in the high security estate, whether they're sex offenders or in general population. But all these sex offenders, especially the high profile ones, will not be having an easy time in prison. And especially when they hear about cases like this, they'll be watching the back constantly, waiting, not knowing when they're next because their day will come off the other inmates. 
Every sex offender that's in prison will be watching the back constantly, not knowing when it's their day to be attacked. But I'm going to leave that one there for now, people. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care, people, and enjoy the rest of your day.